over millions of years, life has adapted to specific environmental pressures by selecting for traits and abilities that ensure survival. Proteins, the microscopic machines that control cellular processes, are a major source of variation that makes organisms different from each other. What if there was a way to speed up these million-year processes to make new proteins with useful purposes? Let's look at how the scientific community is hitting the fast-forward button on protein evolution to design new biological machines. The organic nanotechnology of the natural world is vast. Cyanobacteria were the first to use solar energy to power Rubisco, a protein that converts carbon dioxide into fuel. Flexible and strong materials, like spider silk and turtle shells, are woven together with keratin proteins. Even thermophilic bacteria have their own versions of proteins, versions that are capable of functioning at extreme temperatures. Their optimized DNA polymerase protein, TACPOL, has been used extensively in scientific research and forensics. To understand directed protein evolution, let's first look more closely at proteins themselves. The structure of a protein defines its function. What this means is that the underlying genetic sequence of a protein controls what shape the protein will fold into, and that precise shape is what enables a protein to have a specific function. Organisms naturally create mutant proteins by making slight changes to the protein's underlying genetic sequence. There is a slight probability that these changes will cause mutant proteins to be more optimized, or to even have new abilities. But most random mutations don't enhance a protein. Most changes just break them. That's why being exposed to prolonged radiation doesn't give you superpowers, it just gives you cancer. Now you may be thinking that since scientists know about the sequence-to-structure-to-function connection, why can't they just design a protein from scratch to fold into a specific shape to give a specific function? Well, small changes to a protein's underlying sequence can lead to large and unpredictable changes in protein structure and function. Computers can't accurately predict the three-dimensional structures of proteins by just looking at their sequence. The molecular interactions are just too complicated. Introducing random mutations to a protein sequence and then looking for the desired protein function output is a far better strategy of protein design. This strategy is known as directed protein evolution. Recent advances in directed evolution have placed this technique into the spotlight. The 2018 Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded for work in directed evolution. So how do you direct the evolution of proteins? It's actually very similar to the process of breeding animals for desired traits. First, you select a protein with similar structural features to your desired protein. Next, you create a bunch of slightly different versions of that protein by randomly mutating the protein's underlying genetic sequence. Lastly, you select for the mutated protein variant that has your desired optimized function. This process would be repeated until the desired protein variant has a highly optimized function or a new function entirely. Much the same way that corgis don't resemble wolves, the newly evolved proteins may not resemble the ancestor protein from which the mutant was evolved. Luckily, directed protein evolution is much faster than animal breeding. New techniques to mutagenize proteins and select for desired traits are ushering in a new era of molecular nanotechnology. Directed evolution has led to some major advances. An evolved protein has recently succeeded in creating a carbon-silicon bond, a chemical bond that is not found in nature. Also, to ease the burden of plastic pollution, a plastic-eating protein is being optimized to break down, yes, plastic. And who hasn't heard of CRISPR gene editing? Now the major drawback of CRISPR is that there are many off-target, undesired edits that are being made. But CRISPR proteins are now being optimized by directed evolution to limit off-target edits. The future of nanotechnology will be dominated not by artificial machines, but by organic ones. Thanks for watching.